that it's a strange quirk of human nature that although we can't bear to be deceived by others, we are often quite content to be deceived by ourselves. We'd like you to meet Mrs. James Collier. Mrs. Collier, are you all right? Yes. Let me help you with your coat. Flowers at the funeral. Did you take those away? Of course. shining like it did at the cemetery I have a beloved husband now it's nice warm and comfortable here by the fire uh, I'm not cold I'm warm I'm just very warm I know but you sit down here and I take off your hat you'll feel a lot better So, oh. your hand feels so cool. You know, all the long weeks that you took care of James, you were so good to him, so good. I came to think of you as a third member of our family. Now that it's over, I hope you'll stay with me for a while. Of course, if you wish me to. Yes. Dr. Webb said he thought it might be a good idea if I'd stay on a few days, anyway. Do you remember when he first came home from the hospital? How he talked to my portrait on the wall, what dreadful things he said to it for not taking care of him? Now you must be still. I'm still. I've been still so long. I'm thinking. Thinking. If I can talk, is it better? Well, this is one way of keeping folks quiet. Oh. Mm -hmm. No. Fine. This room seems very strange to me now. All the months that he was ill, I hardly stepped in here at all. Right now, I seem to feel his presence here. Perhaps that's because he planned this room, every last detail of it. He planned it as a background for me. A place where I could work as the brilliant sculptress that you are. Those were his very words. That's what he said to me. Now that he's gone, though, I'm beginning to realize this room doesn't express me. It's 
expresses him. With his wonderfully thoughtful love of me. This room haunts me. Like a ghost. I have some things I should do. Would you rather be alone a few minutes? Oh, no. No, I can't be alone. Not yet. All right. I'll do them later. Do you know what they said? Who? Those women at the funeral. They, they, they said it, it's going to be harder on her because women who have children, they're never quite alone. And I haven't got children. But how could they say that? When one loses one's husband, one is alone, no matter how many children you have or you don't have. Now, you must be quiet. The doctor will be here by and by. Why? Do you think I'm ill? Well, of course not. You're just worn out. Come along. A nice warm bath will be good. No, I, I, I don't want to. Well, at least come and change into something more comfortable. Come on. Oh. You know, I... I don't care if I am ill. I just I can't live my life out alone, I... I know I can't. Do you think it was wrong that there were no children? I couldn't have children. It was my work. It took all my time. And... James understood that. He knew how important my work was to me. And yet I... I remember the night that he died. I, I, I was sitting right there on the bed trying to comfort him. And he was looking at me so strangely. And then all of a sudden, he looked at my portrait. And he started talking to it again. And he said... How little you loved. Although I told him over and over again how much I loved him, he didn't pay any attention to me. He went right on. You loved me so much that you killed our love. You never understood. You wouldn't. Our happiness was shallow and vain. You were a coward in love. There would be nothing if either of us lived in this world. And when I pleaded with him to stop saying those things, he turned to me, but he, he, he looked right through me, and all I said was, My son, my daughter, you can come to me now at last. And then he died without one word of love to me. Not one word. I told you he was delirious. He didn't know what he was saying. I know. I keep remembering how strangely interested he was in all of our friends' children. And whenever we were with him, he always looked at me so thoughtfully. And when I'd ask him what was the matter, he, he'd just say... Nothing. But as I'd watch him with them, giving them all of his attention, I'd feel cheated and hurt. You know, Mr. Jim, I'm going to marry you and I go. <laughs> well, that's the most flattering proposal I've had in a long time. Mr. Jim, here it is. My new sword with the gold handle. Tommy, that's great. Now, we call this the hilt. Oh. Honestly, I don't know where Mrs. Highland is. These children should have been in bed a half hour ago. Now, you run along and find Mrs. Highland. But say goodnight properly before you go. Okay. Good night, Mrs. Highland. Good, good night, Tommy. Good night, dear. Good night, dear. Good night, good night, good night, night Tommy. Good night, good night, good night, Well, good night, Queen Guinevere. You know, Peg, those kids are just great. You must be proud of them. Oh, I am. That's for sure. And you have every right to be. They're just wonderful. Aren't they, Liz? Oh, yes, they're charming. But he didn't seem to believe me. He seemed to be saying to himself that I was something a woman ought not to be. And as much as that hurt me, I, I made light of it. And laughingly, I asked him what was going on in that deliciously mysterious mind of his. But again, he said, nothing. And I believed him. Because I wanted to. Oh, and my head had just stopped aching. <laughs> Mrs. Porter. Mrs. Porter. Can you hear me? Yes, dear, I can hear you. Oh. Will you see the doctor get the message as soon as You know, you're the only person in the world I could tell this to. 
To be sure she'd understand. And you do understand, don't you? You do. You were here with him. You know what he was like. Yes, I do. Yeah. Those statues. Do you like them? Do you think they're pretty? Yes, I do. You see the idea. The boy is youth and the girl is love. Strength and affection that holds the home together. Everybody thinks they're very good. But I don't care much for them anymore. Or for any of my work. It all seems so much like the work of a... a woman. Except that. His portrait. That seems to me the one thing I have done that is worthwhile. It's strong. It's alive. It is, Jim. I remember the night before we sent it to the gallery for its first exhibit. I can still see him standing a little apart from the rest of us. It was a dinner party we'd given to show this before it went to the gallery for its first exhibit. Peg, along with all the rest of our guests, was admiring my handiwork. You know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's great. Somehow, there's something around the eyes that isn't Jim. What do you mean? I know what it is. The eyes look sad. They look too sad. Jim with sad eyes? Oh, never. Yes, they oh, are. Oh. Look at them. Don't you think no, so? No, I don't think so, honey. I think it's great. I like it better than the prize winners over there. Well, as long as we're all being absolutely honest, those two are my first love. That's mm. right, honey. You stick with the critics. Oh, honey, it isn't that <laughs> at all. Anyway, the critics are going to have their chance tomorrow with this one, so we'll see what they say. Hey, Jim, you haven't even opened your mouth. What do you think of it? I'm flattered. Well, if you are, dear, I'm glad, because everything you see in there, I see in you. How many prizes have those two received? Well, well as a pair, I think it was true, wasn't it, Liz? Yes, yes, it was. And Youth, the boy, he took first prize at the North American Sculpture Society exhibition in, um, 1953. Oh, I remember that night. I was there. Mm. Oh, it was really thrilling. Wasn't it? Liz, I don't think I've ever seen you so excited. I was indeed. Also, we had a very special reason for that excitement. What do you mean? Oh. Well, it's rather personal, but since honesty is the policy tonight, Jim and I have always played a kind of, uh, game about those statues, have we? The boys are his son and the girl is our daughter. Yeah? You silly don't get any back talk out of them, do you? <laughs> in spite of all the fun we were having, in the back of my mind, I kept hearing Peg saying that his eyes were too sad. That bothered me. I must have seen that expression. That's why would I have put it there? You suppose he looks at me so sadly because there was that one thing in which I fell short? That must be it. That is it. Oh, if I'd only known. Or perhaps I did know. Perhaps in my heart I did because I did try to justify myself. I told myself that children, the mere duty toward children, the mere love of them would make me less to him. Oh, I've seen that happen so often to people, and to those who are fondest of each other, too. I was always jealous of the mere idea of them. You'll think that's strange, but I was. I was jealous. And then also, I, I might have died, you know. Do you suppose he thought I was just selfish and afraid? Do you suppose he thought that? Come to bed now. Come uh, on. No. No. I'm not that ill. It's, it's, it's just that my head aches, so... Oh, please let me put you to bed. No. 
No, not to bed. Not in there. Not yet. I can't. All right. All right. When the doctor gets here, we'll do what he says. Hmm? In the meantime, just try to relax on the couch. Come on. Instead of trying to show me how wrong I was, he used to just make fun of me. <laughs> and when I questioned him about it, he... He just laughed and, and said it would be less trouble to have a child like other people did. He thought me so dreadfully wrong. He couldn't have laughed, could he? He even made a joke pretending it had already been born. And so I called the baby by his name. And then by and by, he said he wished for a girl. And so I invented a girl. And he called her my name, Sisbeth. You know, the children were almost as real to us as, as if they had been born. You don't suppose they're dead not to, do you? I mean, they were born in his heart and they lived there. They didn't die too, did they? Am I? Am I all alone now? Am I? Oh, my head. It hurts so. It throbs. Oh. Your hand is so cold. That makes me think I'll see you. Go away. Please, go away. It can't be you. You've never been born. Mrs. Porter? Mrs. Porter? What is it? You, you don't see something there? No, dear, there's nothing there. It is I. I have never been born. And I. Is it... Father, where is he? Father. He's dead. Dead? Oh, no. Oh, oh, you loved him, too. Oh, I'm so glad. Believe me, dear, there's nothing there. It's just your imagination. No, no, no. They're right there. His children right there. And they've come to comfort me. Now and always. No. We didn't love him. No. We didn't? You hated him? You don't understand. We can neither love nor hate. All we can do is want him and want you. Oh, Mother, we wanted you so much. Why couldn't we be born? Well, I had my work. I'm a sculptress. I make statues. Are they why you could not have us? What good are they? They're meant to be beautiful. Can they walk and run? No. Are they warm? No. Then they have never been born either. If they had been born, they might have been very beautiful. How beautiful father was. You know, even though I've not been born, I look like him. Yes. Yes, you do. You do. Even we are better than they are. We can move about. Mother, do you remember during the war when father was in the army and once you watched him marching away with his company and wondered how you would feel if I were going with them. Yes, I thought that. 
Well, I was there. I marched all the way. That is, I went with them. I did all I could to help, but it was nothing. I couldn't march, I couldn't fight. You know, if I could even have died, it wouldn't matter so much that I've never been born. And there was that dark bazaar. I might have loved it so hard. Its name was Elizabeth, too. Oh, yeah. My daughter. I've never dreamed of anything so sweet as you are. Never. Mother, you know Roly? Who? Oh. Roland Blake. Oh, yes. He's the son of the Robert Blakes. He's the shy one. The unhappy one. If I had been born, he would have let me love him. I was meant to be his. That's why he's so shy and does such dreadful things. He hasn't anyone to love him. Often I am with him, but he can't see me. Mother... Do you think I might ask him to be good for me, even though I have not been born? It is the same with me. I should have loved Wilhelmina. Who? Wilhelmina Converse. <laughs> Wilhelmina is the daughter of one of my best friends. Yes. She was meant for me. But I was not born, so I had to stand by and let her marry Jordan. I tried so hard to tell her that she was mine, but I couldn't. <laughs> and all day she sobs, just as you are sobbing now. <laughs> Poor Wilhelmina. Poor mother. <laughs> Just sad. Just like your father's. And now I know he always felt what I'm feeling now. But I just ignored it. Why, Mother? Why? Because I was jealous of you children. Jealous of you, who had so much need of the world, and whom the world needs so much. But now, now I want you too. I want you to stay here with me now, and always. No. It could have been, but now it's impossible. Could have been. Oh, don't go. Oh, please, I'm begging you, don't go. It could have been. Stay with me. Don't go. Stay with me, please. Stay with me. Oh, please, don't leave me. Oh, <laughs> my dear, come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> doctor will be here very soon. <laughs> They've gone, and I know I'll never see them again. I'm... It's so awful because it... It could have been. It could have been. Come on, dear. Come on, let's get some rest before the doctor gets here. Oh. <laughs> For all of the sad words of tongue and pen, the saddest of these, it might have been. Well, good night. And we'll see you next week.